Hey. I'm not renting. This is supposed to be one hour for the actual event, and it will okay. still be over here in like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it, should, it should be fun. It's a little stressful. This one here. It was a counter foe that nobody could ever fight off in defeat. Dave's change. And what's up, Doc? Okay, done for a title called Quantum Woody. And it is uh, also segued into doing a team up book with another title uh, mashed up together to be the delinquents. Uh, I'm writing an upcoming arc of the <coughs> big Avengers V team up of their Halos guys in the Brazil community. Um, and developing a handful of other stuff with them, and the Marvel and Mitch Comics. Um, so, since we're here for the whole workshop, we kind of went to those poets a little bit about you know, what it is like to be a writer or what it's like to set back. Sure. Well, um, the, the sort of two avenues um, would change a little bit differently. One is if you do independent or creator of a comic, and that could be, you know, if you're doing a web comic, if you're self-publishing, if you are you know, even doing a comic, if you're 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 a comic, the writer, maybe a collaboration between the writer and artist right. from a conceptual level. If you're going through um, kind of superhero universe companies or even something like a dark horse that So that's a step that may or may not exist depending on who you're working with. Um, colors and lettering often happen simultaneously on separate tracks uh, because they're just once the art is in place, they're kind of dealing with fleshing it out in different ways and where I think the show goes to. Um, so usually the, uh, the colorist is determining the palette, the mood of the book. They're kind of changing. They're, they're putting finishing touches on really achieving the reality of the, the visual art. Um, usually the artist is giving the most notes, the artist and the editor. editor. Um, I don't always see the colors. Uh, as they're coming in. Um, sometimes some editors want me to weigh in in case I notice like, whoa, this is <laughs> totally taken on. It will take longer than that. <laughs> you know, I did, I did a creator own comic for Image, um, and our artist had a day job, and it took him about two years to do 110 pages. Um, <laughs> because you had to do it in, in between the double gig. That's <laughs> not. Uh, but that's always really important to know you want to get into it making a comics venture with someone like get a realistic understanding of their timetable. Um, but a colorist, uh, that's, there's probably a lot of variation on that. I feel like a week or two a colorist. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm looking over to some, another gentleman who works for Valiant on some of these things that will pull us on. And a letterer, a fast professional letterers can usually do an entire issue in four days, five days, something. Um, my books maybe a little bit longer. <laughs> I, yeah, she didn't really. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so the whole thing, and some of these things happen concurrently with each other. Okay. And some, you know, some people can't start until something else is done. So cool. cool. So we we watched the panel a couple hours ago on um, the 25 years of Valiant, and you mentioned to uh, tonal complexity. Yes. Yeah. Writing. Yeah, I um. <laughs> There, there's certainly no shortage of things that are just comedies or are just bleak revenge stories, but I am a big fan of tonal complexity, and I believe that comedies are made more meaningful. So, so it's it's since you're, since you're still on draw yeah, traditionally, you when you scan it, you just have this line yeah. layer so that you're what, basically coloring. So you like, can't just like, well, like so, bucket um, fill stuff. You have to like, like go through and like actually like color down the sandwich color. But yeah, looks good. Thank you, thank you. It's not the best stuff in the world, but it's the stuff that seemed like it fit. Love those characters. Thank you. No problem. And if you guys come to the next couple things, I'll have more stuff that's more. 
But yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Have a good time, guys. <laughs> and please, please do come back. I want to have a lot of people. We will. We will. Looking forward to this, actually. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> If you guys want more info, go to upyourgeekcentral.com. Up your what? Upyourgeekcentral.com for some more info if you want to. So all of the books we do now are their own starting points. Right, I remember you all talking about that in the panel. Yeah. No matter where you start, no matter which one you pick up on. Any books, volume one, tells you it's designed like, if that's all you read, you would get a whole story. Um, the, the volumes, keep going forward, collections of a few issues at a time. Um, and you'll see elements of other parts of the Valiant universe coming into it. Um, they have a voodoo character, Shadow Man, and I utilize some of that world in the second arc, second or third arc of Quan Woody. Um, like I said, you know, we cross over with Archer and Armstrong. But it's always built where we introduce what we need to know. It's very much new reader friendly and i've always tried to write this way but i sort of feel like you're doing your audience a disservice it's not really thanking them for their time or ten dollars if you are giving them a story that like so many 90s comics burnt people out because it, it would like put a little asterisk in a box and it's like to understand this plot point go buy these five other books and it's like right i don't like those characters <laughs> i don't want to i have only so much money <laughs> Yeah, and instead Valiant just kind of cultivates all of these individual characters and storylines, and if you start reading across different titles, you'll get a bigger, richer picture of all of it, but it's really built to be like, hey, read what you like, but they work really hard with great people on making really good stories, and I've never felt more, um, I've worked for a lot of different publishers and, and other fields of writing, but they really work so hard to have to guarantee that by the time the book comes out, it's something worth ever of time. Um, there's a lot of love and passion to these characters, uh, from the CEO through the editors, you know what I mean? Like, just to everyone touching the books. 